Good morning, everybody. If you saw my video on how to do a control rig from scratch, you might be thinking, what if I don't want to build one from scratch? What if I want to just do some copying existing control rigs and work from there? Well, I'm going to show you how to do that in three different scenarios. First, we're going to talk about how to take an existing control rig and apply it to a character that uses the same skeleton, but that has a slightly different positioning of the skeleton. And we'll go through that. Then I'm going to show the easiest of all when you have two characters that share everything identically, then how you would copy control rig there. Then we'll talk about what if you have a character with a totally different skeletal structure, but at least you want to head start with a control rig that already exists. So let's talk about all three of those scenarios. So we'll get started by making a duplicate of this control rig for the mannequin. And we're going to go ahead and rename that man four because that's the name of our character there with the jacket get rid of the one and so right now it's just exact copy of the original mannequin control rig and double click and open it and you'll see this is actually easier than you would think i'm going to come in here a little bit over here on the preview scene settings you'll see the mesh that it's using is for the mannequin because our character that i got from the marketplace uses the exact same skeleton as this character as far as the naming convention and joint hierarchy and everything I can come in here to the drop down and go grab man 4 and you'll see the character switches over here and now this is almost done one thing that's a little different between the mannequin and this character is the positioning of the head joint meaning if I come in here and go way up here and disconnect this for a second so it doesn't evaluate, you'll see that the head pops back up. So this is the character in the original mesh form uh, before we apply the control rig with the forward solve. So what, what's happening? Why is this popping like that? Well, what's happening is if you did watch the whole video of do-it-yourself control rig, we learned that the control here what it's doing, uh, wherever the head is, way over here. Little review for everybody. So the transform of the control is setting the bone position for the head. So that's that's how this works. Let me go back over here for a second. So it's still disconnected. If I go into move mode and I have the control selected, notice that the position of the let me come in here a little closer. The position of the control is not at the position where the head joint is. So what that means is when I hook this up, it's going to evaluate. This is going to pop to here because that's what we're telling it to do. If you were doing it from scratch, you would have had these lined up in the exact same position. So it wouldn't do something like that. So all we got to do, it's actually not that big a deal to fix. You just need to know how to fix it, is we have our head control selected here. Just confirming, see if I move it, that's our head control. We want this point to be in the exact same point as our joint. So right click on it and choose set offset transform from closest bone. And that pops it into that position. Now, if you're looking at this and you're like, well, that's cool, but I liked the control where it was before. Let's first make sure it's working, right? So now everything's working just fine. Right, so hit compile to set it back. So this is working fine, but I want this control down a little bit lower, maybe like it is eye line where it was before. So my friend Brandon Carroll showed me this little trick. If you do a control period, it enables you to kind of put all this on pause for a minute so that you can move your control, then control period again, and then it goes back into it. So it's a, it's a little handier than coming in and having to mess with these values here. So again, that's control period, and then make your change, then hit control period again to go back into a normal mode. It's like a offsetting a pivot in Maya kind of thing. So this character is actually working fine now. All right, so if I disconnect it again, now notice the arms do a little thing. That's actually normal. That's what the mannequin does as well. The original mannequin does the same thing. So that's actually fine. So we'll say this case is done. This character's control rig, we didn't have to do this from scratch at all. We just borrowed it from the mannequin because they share the same skeleton. We just had to make one little change. 
on the head. So I'm going to close, I'm going to compile, save, and close this. Okay, so now this character and this character, this looking at the second case, when you have characters that share everything identical on the skeleton naming convention and positions, this is a really easy situation. I can take my man for control rig, right click, make a duplicate. This is this character is actually man three. So man three, so all I did is make a copy, gonna double click and open it. It's still gonna be using the mesh from SK man full four. Zoom in so we can see this happen. I'm gonna hide the uh, bones for a moment. And so now I want this control rig to be man three. So I'm gonna click on that, grab man three. You'll see he goes into his mesh for man three. Everything stays the same because he is the same, just different mesh settings. Save. Didn't even need to compile. We didn't change anything that really needed recompiling. And then close it. And now we have a control rig for man four. There's our man four control rig. And we have one for man three. And they're ready to roll to be animated as you'd like in the sequencer. So let's, so that's the easiest one. That, that middle one, that's the easiest option. You just change the mesh and you're done. Let's look at probably the least easy or the more difficult. It's gonna take you a little bit more work. And that is this character here. So this character, let's right click. Well, actually I know where he is. I don't need to go find him. So if we go down in here to Murdoch and look in the meshes and look at his skeleton, his skeleton, turn this back on again, is a little different. So he's got lots of stuff. And if you were going to try and build a control rig for him in particular, you would want all these um, skeletal pieces available, which you don't get if you copy the previous skeletons. Let me show you what I mean. So look at his, look at his crazy skeleton here, right? He's got hip packs and I don't know, all these joints everywhere which you may want for your character. That's why they're there. You might want to control them all. So we can still get a big head start, but it's just going to take a little bit extra. Not much, but it's also good for you to know how to do this as well. So we're going to go to our original mannequin control rig. We're going to make a duplicate. We're going to call it Murdoch. Okay, we're going to open this up. We'll move it later. So looking in here, now the catch with what we did before, the previous character shared the exact same skeleton as our mannequin. So we were able to actually just come over here and swap out to that character. But look what happens if we do that with Murdoch. So if you come here and you switch to Murdoch, okay, look at the skeleton at the moment. And then when I switch to Murdoch, look at the skeleton. It's the same skeleton but it just changed the, as it says here, the preview mesh. Remember our, our Murdoch skeleton is pretty crazy. So how do we get the crazy Murdoch skeleton? What you want to do is, and even let's just set this back to the mannequin to show you don't have to do this first. Where was the mannequin? There he is. So let's say we started here a second ago and we didn't do that yet. Come over here to your root skeleton, right click, and choose refresh. And you're not just selecting the mesh, but also the skeletal structure when you do this. So click on the drop down, go find Murdoch. And now the Murdoch skeleton is going to come in instead. And the benefit here is we still have all our controls as well that were used for the mannequin. Now, similar to our first example, He's not, you know, he's not ready to roll as is. Let's turn these off so it doesn't look as messy for a second again. So his head's a little scrunched in and he's standing kind of funny. If we come up here, we can turn this off for a second. Alt click and you'll see, ah, that's his, that's his original pose. And if you hook it back up again, the controls that are in there are working because it is, you know, we have a root control, a root 
bone, a pelvis control, a pelvis bone and such, but they're just not all in the initial proper starting position. So you're gonna have a little bit more work in this case. You're gonna have to run through all your various joints again and center the controls on each joint before hooking all this back up again so that you know you have everything in the proper reference point before getting it up and running. Now, once you do that, the reverse solve should be fine because that's just looking at the forward solve settings to figure out where everything should go. So you shouldn't have to change anything there. It's really just redoing all the forward solve to make everything look just right. And again, the way you can test it is just disconnect it. When you connect it back up again, if nothing changes, then it should be okay. You probably wanna run through your controls just to make sure. You will have that little arm and leg slight twist again because the original mannequin has that as well. So that's just the way it works. So this still saves you a lot of time from having to start from scratch. But again, if you're looking at this demo going, I'm not exactly sure what he's talking about, then I highly recommend you go watch my full do it from scratch, do it yourself control rig video. So you build this entire structure yourself and you'll really understand it a lot better. So then when you come here and you just got to make little tweaks, it's going to be super easy for you. You also still have a bit of work to do because remember this control set here is meant just for the mannequin. So it's got your standard setup. If you want to rig more controls onto Murdoch, then you're really going to have to start going through joint by joint, creating new controls, picking their size, color, offset, and those kind of things. Again, covered in that original longer video. But at least you have a point that you can start with that gets you a big boost and gets you rolling. I would also like to add, you need a break. Why don't you go watch this new stop motion video by Dexter? All right, that concludes this one. Hope this is all useful to some of you out there. Cheers.